So this is Emad, and today I will share my experience with the Tensor-based Google Pixel phones, the 6 Pro, the 6A, and the 7 Pro, after using them for a long time. And the first thing I want to talk about is the design and build quality. I really appreciate that Google started to understand the value of having a new and consistent design. We have never seen this full width camera visor anywhere else before. You might like it or hate it, but you cannot deny that it looks unique, which gives Pixel phones an identity similar to what Apple and Samsung do with their phones for years. So I think Google nailed it in this area. And when it comes to the build quality, I think it's a great, but not in everything. Starting with the 6 Pro after using this phone for a short period of time, I started to see a tremendous number of scratches on the camera, which is something I didn't experience with any other smartphone, noting that I use my phones with caution. I didn't face this quality issue with the 6A even though it has a cheaper price tag and lower quality materials. And after moving to the 7 Pro, I did face a different quality issue, but this time it's the metal frame around the camera lenses. It can easily scratch even with the case on. Yes, my case exposes this part of the phone, but I expected it to take longer for this to happen. But other than those two issues, the other parts of the phone are premium and durable as you would expect from a flagship phone. So to sum up, I'm really happy with the new design language, but I think Google needs to work a bit more on the build quality. And now let's talk about the camera. Since the Pixel 2 till now, I'm always impressed by the still images coming out of the Pixel phones. And the addition of the new periscope lens in the 6 and 7 Pro models is my favorite. They take very detailed zoomed images and amazing portrait photos with a natural bokeh without the need to use the portrait mode. The ultra wide and selfie cameras are also great, both take great photos in all three tensor models, so there is nothing major to complain about. But when it comes to the new 50 megapixel main sensor used in the higher end models, I didn't see a big difference at first, and sometimes I even prefer the photos coming out of the older 12 megapixel sensor, but after March 23 feature drop and Gcam version 8.8, .8, I found some noticeable improvements in this area. Like the less aggressive software sharpening and the better exposure for human faces in portraits and selfies, and that was one of the most annoying issues I experienced with the camera of the newer models, but thankfully, this is no longer the case. And the night photos also improved. For example, the sky looks much better after March update, and this enhanced the overall look of the night photos in my opinion. And it also handles the bright lights much better with great exposure, contrast, and details. Plus, the night portraits are much more detailed, which is a day and night difference. Beside those great improvements, but this new 50 megapixel sensor seems to have a hardware problem that Google will never be able to fix using software, which is the tremendous amount of red lens flares. In this example photo, look at how much cleaner is the Pixel 5 shot, followed by the 6A as both use the older 12 megapixel sensor, while the 6 Pro and the 7 Pro certainly have an issue. The video recording is also one of the areas that Pixel phones lag behind when compared to the competition, and I didn't see a massive improvement after using the Tensor chip. The videos still look soft and grainy in certain situations, plus the video resolution is restricted to 1080p in some camera modes like active and cinematic. And you cannot use the front camera with the cinematic mode either. So as a long-term Pixel user, this definitely requires a lot of attention from Google in the upcoming models. Besides those ongoing issues with the camera, but there are other features that make me stick to Pixel phones despite their subpar video recording capabilities like the photo unblur feature in the Pixel 7 models. It's a great tool to solve one of the most annoying issues you might face with your photos. Face unblur is another great feature that works silently while snapping the shot it uses the ultra-wide lens to minimize the blurness if the subject is moving, and it's available for all tensor-based models. The higher-end models also have the action pan and long exposure features that can help you take great photos when the right moment comes. And finally, magic eraser that can remove any unwanted objects from the scene. The only problem with those features is the exclusivity. At first, Google said that Tensor is what enabled them to make Magic Eraser possible, and all of a sudden now I'm able to use it on my Pixel 2 XL, iPhones, and all other Android phones, so Google needs to be more transparent, and it seems like it's all about marketing to make some models look more capable than others. So here are my final thoughts about the camera of the Tensor-based models. They take amazing photos, they have great camera features, but we need a better 50 megapixel sensor with less lens flares, a better video recording, and revisiting the exclusivity of the smart features, as I think most of them can work on older models just fine. And now let's talk about the performance. 
Overall, you will get a great experience and the multitasking capabilities in normal situations, but the thermal management is far behind the competition. Based on my previous testing, these phones never exceeded the 30 minutes in the 4K60 recording test while the iPhones and Samsung phones can reach a lot more than this. And in my last stress test between the 7 Pro, the S23 Ultra and the 14 Pro Max, the 7 Pro was the only phone to give a thermal warning and dropping the data connection to control the heat. Some people say that Google Tensor is based on Exynos and the Exynos is known for emitting more heat than the Snapdragon processors. And that's why Samsung did a switch to Snapdragon in the latest S23 Ultra, which makes sense but it could be also a problem with the cooling system. When it comes to the battery, I didn't have a great experience at first, but after multiple software updates, I can easily get more than six hours of a screen on time on cellular data with about 20 to 15% battery remaining at the end of the day on all of them. It's definitely not as good as iPhones or Samsung's, but I think it's a solid and good enough for most people. But either way, I think we need a more efficient chip with better cooling, but if you are an average user, you won't find any problem with any of the Tensor-based models. Now let's talk about the software. I would say that stock Android is the least customizable OS when compared to iOS and One UI. Till now, we don't have the option to reorder or hide the home screen pages like the other two. You cannot multi-select apps for bulk actions, and there is no option to customize the lock screen either. But I'm not really mad about it because I know this will change with Android 14 based on what I've seen with the early builds of the upcoming version. In contrast, there are a lot of other features that makes it hard for me to switch to any other OS, like the ability to copy photos, links, and text from the recent apps screen, in addition to the ability to modify the copied items before sharing using the new floating clipboard. The at a glance widget shows a lot of useful information right on my home screen like the commute and weather info. It reminds me that my flashlight is on, it shows the active timers on my smart devices, and a lot more. The now playing feature that automatically identifies songs playing in the background and save them to the history so I can get back to it later. Live translate that can translate any conversation in any app in real time so I can read and write in my own language without worrying about the other person's preference. The great looking array of widgets with different styles to choose from. The adaptive theming that gives a fresh new look to my phone every time I set a new wallpaper. It modifies the quick settings, the icons, the widgets, the keyboard, and more. The haptics that work pretty much everywhere throughout the OS did noticeably elevate my experience with Pixel phones. Plus, the haptic motors used in these newer models are much better in terms of strength and the precision when compared to the older models. Finally, the native integration of Google Assistant gives me more useful features like Assistant Voice Typing that I use daily since its release, and that saves me a lot of time while replying to the YouTube comments. Not to mention the smart calling features like live caption for calls, direct my call, call screening, and hold for me, but most of them are available in specific regions, so they didn't add anything to me just yet. And the best part is, all these features are available on all Tensor-based models. So overall, I would take Google's version of Android over any other OS despite its drawbacks in certain areas, as it gives the most useful and intuitive experience in my opinion. And now let's talk about the unlocking experience on these phones. I think Google's decision to use an optical under-display fingerprint is not the right move, as it's not as fast and accurate as the rear-mounted fingerprint, and the 7 Pro face unlock is no way near the proper face unlock used in the Pixel 4 XL back then. With the Pixel 6 models, the experience wasn't great at first, and it took Google a long time to enhance the experience after multiple software updates. Then the 6A got a slightly better sensor, but even after all of this, the ultrasonic under-display fingerprint used in Samsung phones is faster and more reliable. And the front camera face unlock of the 7 Pro is a hit or miss, as it doesn't work in low light or with sunglasses. So I completely ignore it and always rely on the fingerprint because I'm not sure about the outcome I might get every time I unlock my phone. So overall, I'm not impressed by the unlocking experience of the Tensor-based models, and I would love to see Google switching to the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor or reconsider adding the face unlock as the technology evolved, and now the companies can shrink the size of this complex array of sensors in a much smaller space, like what we have seen with the 14 Pro models. And we also saw other companies completely hiding the front cameras under the display, which could be a great opportunity for Google to implement the face unlock again without sacrificing any screen real estate. And the last point I want to talk about in this video is the displays. All three phones have great quality panels with vibrant colors and a great resolution, but there are some improvements needed. 
Starting with the 6A, the 60Hz refresh rate is not ideal anymore, as I always feel a big difference after switching from 90 or 120Hz. But I'm happy to see that the Pixel 7a leaks expect the phone to come with 90Hz, so let's wait and see. When it comes to the Pro models, they have great panels overall, but maybe the curved display is not for everyone. I personally love how it looks in hand, but I always face a hard time getting a screen protector for it, so it's either the practicality or the looks. And as per the leaks, we might see a flat display in the upcoming Pixel 8 Pro, so if that's an issue for you, it's better to wait for the newer model. The sunlight readability is far better on the 7 Pro thanks to the 1500 nits peak brightness, but the other two will give you above average performance under direct sunlight. So I think the overall experience in this area is good enough and the improvements needed are minor. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. And back to the question, is Google heading towards the right direction? My answer is yes, but they need to give extra attention to certain areas. Either if they are hardware or software related, but I think because they made a lot of changes in the way they make phones in a short period of time made it harder for them to nail everything from the first and second trial, but my expectations in a couple of years, Pixel phones will get much more attention if Google successfully addressed the issues I talked about in this video. So please let me know in the comments what do you think, but for now, thanks so much for watching and see you the next video.